now we will be discussing the next part of the same question question number third which is write the difference between already we have discussed two differences and now we will be discussing the third difference and this difference is between antibiotics and vaccines now what are antibiotics antibiotics are the small uh, chemicals or I, I should not say small but these are the small structures I should say so these are the chemical compounds which uh, can be produced naturally uh, by the microorganism itself they can be or it can be prepared by you know some synthetic way artificial way or it can be prepared simultaneously with the help by mixing both the natural and the synthetic material so what are antibiotics these are the chemical structure which have the capacity to kill the other microorganisms now these chemical structure can be derived from one of the microorganisms which has the capacity to kill the other microorganism now when we talk about vaccines what are vaccines vaccines here the uh, weaker one inactive or the dead microorganisms are given to the or uh, 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 you know this, this is used to make the vaccines now these vaccines helps the person to whomsoever it is given okay this vaccine helps the person to develop immune power against that particular disease antibiotics means what the tablets which we take when we are not well not all the tablets some may be painkiller some may be some for other reason but there are always certain antibiotics which are given and which helps to kill the microorganisms but remember when do we take medicines we take medicine only when we are we are not well when we are unwell at that time only we take medicines that means antibiotics are taken only when we need when we are not well when we are suffering from certain disease or diseases that at that time only we take antibiotics but when we talk about vaccines vaccines are taken when we are ill no vaccines are given prior only like it is a way to uh, protect ourselves from that disease talk about polio vaccine do we wait for the polio disease to occur no after certain period it cannot be given also so vaccines are the one which is given uh, in early ages only before the disease attack the vaccines are given that means it develops the immune system it increases the immune system antibody antibodies are formed this all is been explained but still now antibiotics that means the tablets we take only when we are not well to kill the microorganism but this one is not like that it is and again see suppose i'm uh, i am not well uh, today i'll have to take antibiotics after some time also again if i am unwell again i need to take uh, antibiotics but this is not the case with the vaccines uh, your mama has given you vaccine for polio only once and uh, even for many diseases for many diseases vaccines are given and it has to be given only once it is not at all required to give vaccines again and again but when we talk about antibiotics whenever we are not well then many at many a times antibiotics have to be taken so this is a major difference between uh, both the antibiotics and the vaccines so we'll just write about this i'll divide like this only antibiotics and vaccine so what are antibiotics these are chemicals i 
I will be able to fit I will be able to write in this no issues. So, these are chemicals which are produced by generally microorganisms I am using word generally which has capacity to kill other microorganisms. I am writing in short, I am writing in short over here. Now, what are vaccines here? These are to prepare vaccine what has to be done? These are what? The inactive weak or dead microbes. Now, this one has to be taken again again. See I am not writing this thing in detail, I am writing just gist, but I have explained this while discussing the chapter also and here also I have discussed. So, I am writing just gist of this that has to be taken, has to be taken during illness. is given only once, is given only once. Now, viruses, I am so sorry, vaccines are like what they increase immune power, increases or develops immune power part against the disease against the disease but here it is not the case there is nothing related to the immunity power do not increase immune. See obviously, it will kill antibiotics will kill the microbes, but you know it is not the case that the like once if you have taken the antibiotics for any particular disease that you will never suffer from that disease again is it so? No. So, please do not misinterpret the meaning of this sentence that do not increase immune. Uh, that means, you need to take antibiotics again whenever it is required in life, but this one is taken once in the lifetime. You do not have to take um, vaccines again and again. Now, the sources, the sources can be natural. Now, I do not have place, I started you know bit from this side which is which I think it was it should not have uh, I could have shifted to that side. So, could have written properly ok then sources natural or synthetic and even semi synthetic I am not writing over here and here obviously, it is what natural. So, these are the uh, major differences between the antibiotics and the vaccines. Now, we will talk about the other difference which is between the pathogens and the carriers. Now, the difference is between pathogens and carriers. I will write I will not 
make a smaller column here pathogens and carrier. Now, what is the meaning of the pathogens? Pathogens are those microorganisms which spread diseases, which are responsible for various diseases. So, what are pathogens? These are microbes or these are microorganism or these are disease causing microorganism. Disease causing microorganisms. Pathogens are the microorganisms which are responsible for causing various diseases. Now, what can be these example? Anything like the few bacteria, maybe a certain protozoa. Now, what is the meaning of the carrier? Carrier are the ones which carry these pathogens in their body. They carry pathogens in their body. For example, mosquito. Even house fly, even red. So, these are the examples of the carriers. As I discussed, that mosquito carry plasmodium. So, mosquito is carrying that microorganism in their body. So, this one mosquito is just carrying, they are carriers. But who is the pathogen, the, the microorganisms which are responsible for the uh, cough, which are responsible for various diseases. The one which causes diseases are pathogens, but the one uh, who, are, who only carry the pathogens are known as what? Carriers. So, these were the differences, uh, four differences which we have discussed. Now, we will move to the next question that will be the question number fourth. Please note this. Now, we will talk about next question that is question number fourth now. So, it is question number fourth or I should write here answer number fourth and the question is in a long time period of unfavorable conditions all living beings can die but microorganisms cannot why the question is that in, in any kind of unfavorable conditions ok now what is the meaning of unfavorable condition unfavorable conditions means a condition where the living organism uh, cannot grow properly or it becomes difficult to survive for any living organism now, when we talk about microorganisms, what are the conditions which needs to be there or what are the favorable conditions of the microorganisms it, uh, uh, like uh, the presence of oxygen or absence of oxygen. If the microorganisms are aerobic that means they require air and if they are uh, anaerobic that means they do not require air. So, presence I will talk about because most of the um, microorganisms are aerobic. So, I will talk about first of all the presence of air. This is very very important. Food availability of food has to be there. Water or I can say uh, the moisture has to be there. Temperature has to be very very optimum you know like uh, between 25 degrees Celsius to 38 degrees Celsius. and even the presence and absence of sunlight also uh, brings a question mark on the existence or on the survival of the microorganisms. Here the question asked is that even if the microorganisms have to face lot of unfavorable conditions or adverse condition, but why what is the reason that they will be uh, able to survive? 
and all other uh, organisms won't be able to survive in such kind of adverse condition. So, this thing we have discussed before also while discussing the while giving the explanation or while explaining uh, about the uh, this conditions. Uh, so, I explain this that microorganisms have the capability to form uh, spores that means they cover themselves in a capsule. They, the spore is not the medium of reproduction in them. The spores which I am talking about is what they, they just cover themselves by a capsule. They cover their body by a capsule, they, they get enclosed in that, they become inactive and they remain safe in that. But again when the favorable conditions occur, then again these microorganisms can become active that means they do not die whereas they again become active. So, the question is in a long period of unfavorable conditions all living beings can die, but microorganisms cannot why because they have the capacity to form spores. Here again I am stressing that spores I am not talking about the reproductive spores. Here I am saying this also I have explained while explaining the structure of bacteria that the uh, outer layer that capsule is formed and all in our matter it aggregates and it you no know, it shrinks up and that wall covers and protects the inner matter or inner material of the microorganism. That is the reason it remains safe and whenever the favorable conditions come this wall gets broken and again the uh, bacteria or uh, the microorganism is uh, free and they will be able to survive. So, what is the reason? Because microorganism has the capacity microorganism has the capacity to form a protective layer I will write this in bracket spores this protects them in all kind of unfavorable condition, unfavorable condition and again it gets broken up when the uh, favorable conditions arrive. So, what I have written over here microorganisms has the capacity to form uh, a protective layer or in if you are do not consider the bracket then microorganism has the capacity to form spores. This protects uh, in all kind of unfavorable condition or this layer or spore protects in all kinds of uh, unfavorable conditions. So, again I am saying I have not written the answer completely I have just written the gist. So, this layer protects the microorganisms from all kind of unfavorable conditions or in all kind of unfavorable conditions. So, this is the reason why all other organism will not be able to survive, but microorganisms will be the one which will be able to survive themselves. Please come to the next one. Now, we will be talking about the answer number fifth. Now, when we talk about answer number fifth, the question is why uh, is the rainy season in India the time for outbreak of many diseases such as malaria, dengue etc. Now, what is the reason behind this? We all know malaria, dengue, 
even in chicken uh, gunia if we talk about the carriers are mosquitoes so all these diseases are actually uh, like when we are talking about when uh, we are talking about malaria dengue chicken gunia all these diseases um, spread due to what th they have carriers that means they uh, who are responsible who is responsible for the spread of such kind of diseases if the uh, mosquitoes are the carriers and if the number of the mosquitoes will increase definitely what will happen these diseases will spray, spread faster and why it is related with monsoon or why it is related with rainy season because in rains the mosquitoes get a lot of good conditions and even their fertility is at the peak their reproductive power increases they reproduces very fast because they get water they get what they want they want stagnant water wherever you find stagnant water you will find mosquitoes are there larvas of the mosquitoes will be seen over there that means these uh, mosquitoes breed very fast in monsoon and that is the reason the number of the mosquitoes increases and that is the reason why these kind of diseases for what the mosquitoes are carriers such kind of diseases increases i'll just read the question again why is the rainy season in india the time for outbreak of many diseases such as malaria dengue etc so now as monsoon during monsoon or during rainy season as water get as water get collected as water get collected and thus increases the favorable conditions for mosquitoes to breed thus the number of mosquitoes increases which are carriers of the diseases like malaria dengue etc so that is the reason why the uh, in why we, I, i should say that in rainy season the mosquitoes the number of the mosquito increases as the breeding uh, as the fertility is also at peak and as the mosquito will increase automatically the carriers are uh, will be increased and so these diseases spread very very easily now we'll move to the next question now now the next question is uh question number now it will be 5 so first of all here uh fourth question is over and fifth one is also over now we'll move to the question number 6 so answer number 6 now what is this question this is why blue green algae are used as bio fertilizers why blue green uh, algae are used as bio fertilizers we have discussed this thing many a times that the blue green algae are responsible for nitrogen fixation i don't think so now there is any need to explain that what is nitrogen fixation so 
the blue green algae has the capacity of nitrogen fixation that is the reason it is added in the fields in the soil so that the fertility of the soil can be increased so the simple reason behind adding the blue green algae is that it has the capacity of nitrogen fixation so i'll just write the question uh, sorry the answer the question is why blue green algae are used as bio fertilizers as blue green algae has the capacity of nitrogen fixation so to increase the fertility of the soil to increase the fertility of the soil blue green algae is added and added added to the soil and is used as bio fertilizer so that is the reason uh, blue green algae is used as bio fertilizer now we are coming to the last question of this extra questions of microorganisms and the last question is question number 7 and the question is explain different modes of locomotion in the uh, uh, protozoa that means how protozoa move we have to explain so i won't be writing this answer in detail but just we'll talk about this see there are different modes how the protozoa can move if we take the example of the amoeba if we take the example of the amoeba we all know how amoeba moves amoeba do not have any extra part in its body amoeba moves with the help of the false foot which is known as pseudopodia and it is also known as false foot now if i talk about here yeah, this one i can write a if i write about paramecium we all know paramecium's body is covered by cilia now suppose this is paramecium so here this whole part will be covered by cilia cilia is what very minute uh, we all know these uh, all plasm uh, paramecium amoeba are very very minute we cannot see them without a uh, microscope so just imagine about these small structures which are present on their body so what are cilia very minute uh, thread like structures which help them to move from one place to another so they have got cilia now when we talk about the next one take the example of the euglena so what euglena has euglena has a long thread like structure which is known as flagella so euglena has flagella so if uh, you know want to see the different uh, kinds of motions or different kinds of how they can move take any aquatic plant you know and remove that upper layer of the leaf and uh, take that upper layer 
uh, try to make this slide and uh, put a drop of water and just see under microscope. You will find amoeba over there and you will see that nothing, no additional part is there, just how amoeba moves with the help of the pseudopodia. In the same way, very minute structures can be seen uh, thread like on the whole body of the paramecium which is known as cilia. If I talk about euglena, it has got a long thread like structure which again helps him, helps it to move. Now, if we talk about plasmodium, now this plasmodium is what? Plasmodium is parasite. So, again this do not have to move anywhere. Water movements are whatever uh, movements are going on inside the body, it moves according to that only. So, some are parasites, some has got cilia, some has got flagella and some moves or especially I should say about amoeba, amoeba moves with the help of the pseudopodia. So, these all were the uh, answers uh, which I thought, uh, which I decided to discuss uh, and I thought actually that this all these questions can help you out and uh, this is all with this chapter. Thank you.